Love John. See what I'll come up.
से कहें
that the church needs to come out from among the world. Right. I think the world used to come into the church years ago, but now I think the people are going out and bringing the world into the church. Amen. They're wanting to say, this is right and this is wrong and this is the way I need to live. And this is my road map right here. Amen. God has created this road map for you and I, and praise God, the road map is true, it's pure, it's clean, and uh, you can misinterpret it if you want to, and you can take it to suit yourself, but if you really rightfully divide this word of God, this road map will keep you clean and pure before God. And that's where we need to go. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, turn there with me this morning, I'll read you some scripture. And I don't know whether I'll get done with this message, but we'll try and see how far we can go. Amen. We'll start her this morning. How about that? Chapter 6, starting at verse 17. Good to have you this morning. Good to be here. If I haven't shook your hand, it's good to be here. Amen. I'd rather be here than to be in the best jail in Davidson County. <laughs> 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 I'd rather be here than to be sitting at home this morning. That's all right. Yeah. You know, it's, people say, well, it's cold outside. We come by several churches, and a lot of them, I reckon, had their doors shut. There was one car at one church. And I thought, I told that guy, it looked like people are staying home today. You know, back when there it was cold. I've seen a lot of churches that were empty every Sunday. They oh, wow. Sunday anymore, aren't they? Yeah. But, you know, I thought about Whenever it was cold and I had to go to work, I'd put on my old big coat and I'd head on out the door. That's right. And you know, this is more important than where I worked at. That's right. That only supplied my needs for one week most of the time where I worked at. This supplies my need for a lifetime. And that's the way I look at it. Praise Amen. God. Y'all know where we at? Second Corinthians, chapter six, six verse, verse seventeen. 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separated, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Amen. Who are we coming out from among? The world. The world. The world. The world. We should not be a part of this world. I know it ain't popular preaching this morning. Because a lot of people think that they can be a part of the world, act like the world, be the world, and, they, and still go to heaven. But uh, not gonna happen. we're going to have to come out from among the world. We're going to have to be a separated people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to be a people that, I think, and before I get too carried away with preaching, I want to lay you a little foundation here. I think people have watched TV. <clears throat> they have watched their favorite shows so much. And those shows show people living in sin and they show them in happy places. They show things in their lives going good for them. They show them being pleased with what's going on around. And I think that the world today has fell into a group of where we think we can live like the world and still go to heaven. Because on those shows we see that whenever one is gone, then they'll say, well, they're in heaven, or either they're on the other side, or, or everything's good in their life. But we as Christians this morning should know, and if you are a Christian this morning, let me speak to you first. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, He died on an old rugged cross and shed His life's blood that you could be a Christian this morning. He loved you enough that He didn't only die on that old cross, but praise God, he took a 39 stripes upon his back with a canine whip. He went to a tomb and rose out of that tomb, went to the depths of hell, took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from the devil that you and I this morning can worship him. Amen. Because he loved us. But I think that we have let the TVs and the people that live around us and the things that we say, well, if we ruffle feathers, then... Uh, We'll be in trouble. We, we need to get along with them. We need to try and be a part with them. But the Word of God tells us to come out from among those That's people. Right. Not to be like those people. 
Not to be a part of those people. You say, well, Brother Kid, now how am I going to win them if I'm not a part of them? You can't win them by being a part of them. If you're not separated, if you're not uh, completely cleaned up from this old world, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, there's no way that you can be a soul winner. That's right. That's people say, oh, but Brother Ken, I've helped the many of people get their heart right with God. I've helped the many of people find Jesus, and I'm not really with God where I need to be. You have not helped one soul. Because you haven't helped yourself, first of all. Most, most of all, you've got to help yourself. You've got to come to this altar, repent of your sins, call upon the name of the Lord, and come out from among this world. This world is doing nothing but destroying our relationship with God. Amen. This world is doing nothing but setting a fire between us and the Heavenly Father. And the devil is leading the world right now. Yes, he is. With all that he has got. He is in charge. And, and he is uh, like a roaring lion going to and fro and devouring all that he can. And honey, he's devouring the churches is what he's doing. He's stealing the very ones that love God. Those that have their name written down in the Lamb's Book Amen. of Life. He's causing them to look to the other way and say, well, everything's all right. It seems like whenever our kids start doing things wrong and our kids start living without Jesus, we find excuses yes. mm. why they're that way. It's never the devil. It's always excuses. Well, I have found out whether it's my child or your child, and this is hard. Yep. Or if it's my spouse or your spouse, and they're wrong, then they're still wrong. Right. It's not... Because their name is different on the end, that they're going to be able to go to heaven. It's not because of who they are. It's not because daddy had money. He put a lot of money into the church. And it's not because mama prayed a good prayer. But it's because we have let God change our hearts and give us a new road. Amen. And we're walking yes. with Jesus. That's why I'm sorry for this younger generation. This world is not my home. That's right. Amen. I am a pilgrim passing through. That's right. And that's what we need to get in our mind. We need to stick with this and make sure that we're walking in the way that Jesus wants us to walk. It says here, Amen. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. separate. You keep that in mind. Now, go with me, Ephesians. We'll go to Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 11. If you're a Christian this morning, if you are a child of God, I know this is a little different than what I preach a lot of times, but Lord, give me this message. And I want to give it to you this morning. I will take some time with it. If I have to go into Sunday night and finish it up, I want some time. I want some time that I can give you what God has given me because I think as I was saying just a few moments ago I think that we've listened to the TV and we've listened to all those that live around us and we've sort of let our relationship with God get cold and indifferent Amen. we've let it get to work it's not boiling like hot water it's not on fire for God and then whenever we come to church, we say, well, nobody shouts, nobody gets happy, nobody feels that glorious time to run up and down the aisles. And the problem is, it's not because of the people, it's because we have went outside and brought the devil into the church. And whenever the devil's in the church, you can't find victory in the church. And we have to come out from among it and say, God, we need you in the church that are disturbed by mind change me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Amen. Right. Amen. Oh, I know this ain't popular preaching. I know people don't like it, but I don't care. <laughs> I can go home and sleep just as good after I say it because I know God gave it to me. Amen. In Ephesians it says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. 
Reprove them. If you're going out here, and I've seen this so many times, I've seen preachers, whenever they meet one person and they know how they believe, then they'll believe like that person believes. Whenever they see another person and they believe another way, then they'll change their belief like them. They'll believe like they believe. But guess what? I've seen church members the same way. I either am or I'm not. Either I'm a Christian or I'm not. Either I know Jesus is my personal Savior or I'm not. I cannot change for you and you can't change for me. Either we are with God or either we're not with God. We need to make up our mind whom we're serving today. We need to make up our mind who are we going to spend eternity today. We need to make up our mind and let Jesus know that we're not going to let the devil rule us. Our own children sometimes will try to change us. They'll try and get us to believe that everything's all right. That everything's wonderful because they're doing these things. And we back them up in their mess, then we're just as guilty as they are. Right. If we cover it up, we're just as guilty as they are. Some words or another, you've got to come out from among it and say, in the name of Jesus, I'll not back you up, but I'm going to stand for God. I've got a destination Amen. to go to heaven, and I'm not going to be part of this world to back you up in what you're doing, and I'm going to serve this Lord with all that is in me. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Woo! Great. You say, Brother Ken, they won't come see you. They won't, they won't be a part with you. That's all right. I'm going to pray for their soul. I'm going to pray that God touches them. I'm going to send somebody that can speak to them. Because you can believe it or not, you can't speak to your own kids. It takes somebody else. But God's got a man. God's got a woman. God's got somebody that can touch that heart. But you know what our problem is? We accept what the devil says about it most of the time. Mm -hmm. We say, well, honey, we got, we got, to, we got to let them in the house. We got, we got to let them do what they're doing. We can't do anything about that. Just let them come on in and don't, don't say nothing to them. Just try and keep peace in the family. <laughs> if you don't tell them, how are they going to know? That's right. yeah. Yeah. That's true. If you don't at least speak it to them, how are they going to know? If you're praying about it and you're not really telling them, then how are they going to know? You do it in love and kindness. You can't force them, but you've got to let them know that you're not a part of them. And you say, well, again, they're flesh and blood. When I, when I went to an altar of prayer and I repented of my sins, my bloodline was changed. I'm not who I was. Amen. Behold, I am a new creature in Christ. Amen. Amen. I am not what I was. I am a new creature in Christ. Behold, I have come out from among the world, and the world is not in me anymore because I am a part of Jesus Christ. Brother Ken, you still make mistakes. You still say things. You, yes, praise God, and I'm so thankful that I have an advocate with the Father. Yes. You can never yes. forgive me, but God forgives me. And praise God, God's going to raise us up in these last days, even though... We're not perfect. There's not one of us in here perfect. We all have a mistake. We all take things and say things sometimes that we shouldn't say. But praise God, we have an advocate with the Father. Amen. But I can honestly say that whenever God changes you, He changes a lot of you. That's right. I've never said a curse word since God took me back into the boat. Never have. Never wanted to. Yo, you ain't never hit your finger with a hammer. I have too. And if God's in you, the first thing that come out of you is, oh God. Oh God. But if something else in you would be another word that comes out. I really believe that. Because whenever he cleans you up, he changes you. This whole world is just a 
place that you're walking through is not part of you. It's not leading you. It's not guiding you. It's just a highway. That's right. That we're going down. The narrow path the Word of God talks about. That path where it's crooked, it's harder to stay on. you got to be aware of where you're on at all times. The Bible says broad is the way to destruction. Mm -hmm. You can go just as fast as you want to go. You don't really have to look up. You can just take your time and let her in. But on this narrow path, you've got to be aware of everything that's around you. You've got to take some time with it. Well, Ken, uh, the Broadway looks like to me it'd be a lot easier. It is. Of course. Yeah, it's a lot easier. But the rewards are eternal punishment. Damnation. No peace, no happiness. There's a lot of people that have to go to these shrinks or whatever you call them. They have to have somebody to talk to and try and pull them back in line and try to help them and try to get their minds straightened out and all this. And a lot of them, all they need is to get on the narrow path with Jesus. Get in an altar of prayer and call upon his name. He can get them on demons and methods trying to tear their life down mm -hmm. and destroy them. And he could get them on the right path and they would feel the love yes. of such a Savior, such a God. A God that has spent our life and his life that you and I might find peace and happiness, right. love. And you talk about that the broad path is the easy way? Mm, I don't know. I like this narrow path. I like the path where I have to be aware of who's around me. I like the path of where I know that my name has to be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Mm, yes. I like the life where I know that I don't have to worry about what tomorrow's going to bring. I don't have to worry about who holds my tomorrow. People says, well, if I don't lay up and I don't have treasures down here, then and the mar comes and, and who's going to take care of me? God's always took care of me. Even through some of my ignorance, He's always took care of me. Even whenever I wasn't worthy, He's took care of me. Amen. He's giving me peace. He's giving me happiness. Don't have to be rich. People say, oh, if you die a millionaire, you're going. No. If you die with Jesus in your heart. Because he can't take it with you, right? Amen. <laughs> Matter of fact, the new COVID that I was talking to you about a while ago, Bill Gates has already, already got what you need to take that's going to take care of the new COVID that's going to kill you. <coughs> and if you put this on, it's got no nans in it, I believe it's called, and you can buy and sell with it. Ooh. <coughs> This new money that they're talking about that they're going to change the world to, you're going to be able to use that new money with that shot that they can give you. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. That new shot is even going to make a mark on you. Now, you can do whatever you want to do, and you can say that Brother Ken's crazy. And you want to live enough to take this. And you can say that nobody has ever warned me, but I'm warning you this morning. Because if you don't believe me, I'll send it to you off my phone. It's not something that the world's thought up. 
It's something that Bill Gates has been working on. Is he going to take it? Well, I guarantee you he's going to take it. He's not going to be a part of it. He didn't take his first shots. Why should he take these? He put himself in his own home and locked the door and wouldn't let nobody in. Wouldn't even let people bring in groceries. Had to leave them outside. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is we've got to come out from among people like that. That's right. We've got to come, and we've got to put our trust in this God. You say, Brother King, you're trying to scare me this morning. No, what I'm trying to do you this morning is this. I want to be the rock watchman on the wall that Ezekiel was talking about. And I'm trying to warn you this morning to get your house in order. I'm trying to stand on the wall this morning and say, look, come out from among this world. This world does not love you. This world does not care anything about you. This world wants you to go down. This world wants you to be destroyed. They want the things that you have. They want your land. They want your house pushed off of where they can make their foods and do the things they want to do. They want you out. But what they don't want is God in this land. But I can tell you something, honey, Amen. if we'll come out from among them, we're the winners because God is going to set us apart and praise God. One of these days, God's going to take us home. Amen. Right. Amen. Glory. Amen. What a God. What a God. Turn with me to John chapter 17. I ain't gonna keep you too long this morning. I'll let you go. Don't worry about it. John chapter 17, starting at verse 13. This is Jesus speaking to you. See, Jesus is all joy. Jesus is all glory. Jesus is all happiness. We've took this thing and we've brought the world into it. And we've made Jesus look sad. People come to church and they leave and they're under conviction and they're upset and they're sad and they've got tears in their eyes and they're worried. That's, that's what the world says. They don't see those of us that have come in and repented of our sins and called upon the name of the Lord and feel the joy and the happiness of a heavenly Father that whenever you lay down at night, you don't break out in a sweat, that you don't feel condemnation, but you feel the joy and the presence of the Holy Ghost and the power of God lay down with you at night and know without a shadow of a doubt that there's nobody that can harm you. There's nobody that can destroy you. You see, I'm a child of the king. Amen. And they might can destroy this old body, but they can't destroy the soul. They, this soul here belongs to Jesus. Amen. They have nothing to do with it. It's not theirs. And praise God, it's been bought with a price of a heavenly father that outstretched those arms. And they're not in charge of what's going on. Right. They think they are. God's giving them some leadway. He's trying to get these people to straighten up. I hear of people right now that some of them have went to the bottom. And God's trying to say, hey, wake up. Amen. Wake up. Because they've been part of the world too long. Amen. And God said, wake up. Get ready. But they want somebody to rock them to sleep. Mm -hmm. Take care of all my needs. Bless me. And, 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 and give me joy. And everything will be wonderful. But the only way you're going to ever find joy in this world is to find this man that I'm getting ready to read to you. Right. His name is Jesus. Amen. The only way you're going to ever find joy in your home is by letting Jesus be Lord of your life. John chapter 17, verse 13. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Talking about us, that they hate us, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. 
That's the reason they're doing all these things. They're not doing these things against the people that are in the world. They're doing it against God's people. Because God's people are the ones that's being blessed. God's people don't have to worry about storing up money. God's people don't have to worry about storing up food. God's people don't worry about where they're going to live and where they're going to lay their head. Because God's going to take care of His people. God's going to bless His people. Amen. And people, they say, well, Look here, you gotta be smart. You gotta be smart. I am smart. I bowed in an altar and I gave my heart to Jesus. And now he's obligated to me. I'm his child. I am smart. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. So we need to stay away from the evil. We need to separate ourselves. Amen. That's why he says, be ye separate, come out from amongst them. I just read that, didn't I? Yep. And that's the reason he said that. Mm -hmm. The evil is destroying the very elect. Yep. It's trying to get you to say, what's the use to serve God? Mm -hmm. We've heard it for many years that he's coming, mm -hmm. but nobody's seen him. My mom and dad, your mom and dad, they've all went on and nobody's seen him. He's not come. But honey, just as much as there was an Adam and Eve in Genesis, mm -hmm. there's a revelation. Yep. And those saints of God that have put God first, they're coming back. They're coming back on a white horse. You say, Brother Ken, I can't ride a horse. You're going to be able to ride a horse. <laughs> You're going to be able to do things that you've never been able to do. God is going to prepare, and you're going to be able to come back, and you're going to see a battle like you've never seen before right. because our God's going to be in charge of it. But those are the ones that have separated themselves from this world. From this world. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Jesus said, I'm not of this world. Not part of it. Sanctify them thoroughly. Thy truth, thy word is true. So how do we sanctify ourselves? By the word. By the word. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world for and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be <coughs> sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone but for them also which shall be a, leave on me through their word. That they all may be one as thy father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given thee, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known thee, that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in thee, and I in thee. What a God. What a God. That pretty well explains it all. I'm going to 1 Peter chapter 4 tonight, verses 1 through 7. If you want to read that, that goes along with my message. I'll finish it up. But, uh, 
We must come from the things that we're putting in our lives and say, God, set us apart. We have looked at the things the world is doing and we've started to accept it. We're saying it's all right. Church, I'm here to tell you today that if it was wrong in God's time, in Jesus' time, it's wrong in our time. Because He changes me. He's not changing for you, He's not changing for me. People says, well, people dress a little different today than they did back then. I sure do. Back then they wore clothes that went all the way down to their ankles. They lived in a different region than we do. They dressed a whole lot different than we do. But if you're covered up, that's what it's all about. And you're not showing your nakedness. You see, that's what the lady at the well started doing to Jesus whenever he started trying to tell her how she needed to live and how she needed to give up the man that she was living with and not live with him anymore. She started telling him about, well, the, the, in your word, you said they should worship in a certain mountain, you know, and all these things. And she was trying to get his mind away from her sin. What I'm going to tell you this morning, if God spoke to your heart and you feel like something you're doing is not right, if you feel like you can't go to heaven with something that you got in your life, if there's something in your home, or if you've been backing up your children in their sin, or if you're saying, well, you're all right, everything's good, and you're going to heaven, be careful what you say. That's right. I witnessed to my dad a few days before. He passed away. I was hoping I got through to him. He said he was praying things, but whenever I was out there at the hospice house, I looked at him take his last breath. heart started pounding in my chest. It felt like it was going to jump out. Not because I lost my dad. But I was in between Ken and him, and I was wondering if I'd done enough. make sure he had given his heart to Jesus. And I really felt like I was going to die. They had to take me to the hospital. Not because my dad died, but because I didn't know where he went. I wasn't assured. I wasn't lost. I never really had him saved or any. Never heard him say that he really call upon the name of the Lord to come into his life. He said, look, you know what to help us this morning. But hey, we'll be the hospice house next week. And one of you be there. And we have to wonder whether I preached enough. Well, that's said enough. To get you to come out from among this world and <coughs> serve Jesus. Oh, it cost me to go to the hospital and then check my heart and all this. Brother Ken, was you worried about that? No. Just give me the shivers. That he made heaven his home. I give up everything I want. What I own don't mean nothing. What I have don't mean nothing. Will you 
years of eternity makes a difference. Mm -hmm. See, I've read the back of the book. I've read where you have to go through suffering, pain, every day in hell. And I don't want nobody in my life to have to go through that. Amen. I don't want anybody, anybody, anybody to have to be a part of it. That's the reason I preach like I do. That's the reason I follow God's lead. That's the reason I don't try and get out of God's lead. I try to give you what God has given me. Your soul means more to God than anything you have. That's right. You might live in a beautiful home. You might own a lot of stuff. You might have a lot of money laid up in the bank. Cancer takes all that in a few minutes, you know. It does. It does. It takes everything you own in just a few minutes. Yep. Even with insurance. So what I want to tell you today is this. Be careful. Be careful with your soul. And if you're not with God where you need to be, we have a wonderful <coughs> time here where Jesus comes and meets us, where he loves us. And I'd love for you to come if you're not with God where you need to be this morning. If you've got any kind of question in your mind, come and turn it over to Jesus. Don't leave the same way you came. Give it all to Jesus. Jesus loves you. I love you so. I love you. No matter what condition you're living in, I love you so. Jesus loves you so. He wants you to be ready with all that is in you. If you're not ready this morning, you're not assured, because we don't know what's going to happen this week or next week. We don't know what's going to happen before we get back to church. But I can tell you who will hold tomorrow. If we're late. If you're here this morning and you need to come to this altar, please come. Please come. written down in the Lamb's Book of Life or not. Brother Ken, can you know that? The Word of God says it's a no-so salvation. I can tell you this morning that God has written my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I have worked and I've prayed and I've sought God's face and I've repented to keep my name there. And you'll have to do the same thing. Because we're human. We're not home yet. Right. But I can tell you this. I've lived both ways. And this is the happiest life I've ever lived in. If you want a taste of something good, if you really want a taste of something that will last you forever, love for you to come to this altar. I'd love for you to renew your covenant or maybe strengthen your covenant with God. Or maybe just put Him first in your life. If you want to come, He's here. Will you come? Will you come? Anyone else want to come? Anyone else? Amen. Yes, Lord. Will you come? Will you say, Jesus, I'm going to do this because I love you? Have your way, Lord. Will you come? Will you be a Paul? Jesus. Will you come?